lot of people have been commenting on my God Hunt versus Disk Space 3.0 nippers, saying that they've probably broken one or the other. So, in today's video, I want to show you guys some tips or some tricks on how you can prolong the life of your single blade nippers and how you should be using them different from your regular everyday nippers. Let's get it. Single bladed nippers are probably the number one most suggested item when it comes to upgrading your toolkit. With that said, I think it's important to understand how these work compared to regular nippers. So without further ado, let's head into the workstation to compare the two tools side by side. All right, now that we're here at the bench, let's go ahead and take a look at our two nippers that we have for today, as well as our two side cutters that we have. And the first thing you're going to notice when we pick up our two pairs is that the nippers here have a much thicker blade or much thicker cutting surface compared to when we look at our side cutters here. Same thing is gonna go for the Bandai ones that come in the entry grade kit, as well as the Dispay 3.0 nippers. So with looking at the two different types of heads, what we understand is that there's gonna be two different types of cutting patterns. And when we look at this, what we see here with the regular style nippers is we see two even sized blades on either side. And this means that this nipper works by pinching the plastic between the two blades in order to break the pieces apart. So in actuality, they may say this is like a cutting tool. This is actually more like a pinching tool and it pinches it to the point where the plastic breaks. That's generally why when you use these type of nippers, you get some sort of stress mark because it's putting stress on the plastic as it's pinching it together. Now, when we look at the Dispay nippers, the, um, these god hands or the Dispay nippers, what you're going to see is that we have a much smaller profile blade, much thinner looking, right? And what's going to happen is we have one blade side and we have one stopper side. And what happens with this is that the stopper side was going to hold to the nub in place while the blade side comes through. Oh, excuse me. The blade side comes through and cuts the plastic piece off, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. So with that said, knowing how these two different nippers work, we can see now how this is going to produce a much more fine, a much more refined cut versus this, which is much more of a gross cut. And that's also why people recommend using these for an initial cut to get the bigger nubs out of the way, and then using this to come back and clean it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some pieces of plastic for us to cut out so we can see the difference between the two cuts. So I have a section of runner here that I wanna demonstrate everything on. First, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the regular style nippers and see how they work. And then we'll go ahead and compare it to the uh, single blade nippers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut a large section of runner here so we can get a cleaner picture of what's happening. So I'm going to bring this up real close to the camera so you guys can get a better look at what's happening here. So as I bring it in, as you notice, as I start to squeeze, you're gonna see that white section form right in the middle of where I was cutting. And that is the stress point because all the pressure is being put onto that part. And as I continue to squeeze, you're gonna notice that the part is going to break. And you're gonna see that the nub here on this side is not a very clean nub. And that's because we pinch the pieces until they broke. That's why generally you hear that loud clack because it's a catastrophic failure. Our nippers close and the plastic breaks. And that's what we hear. Compared to when we use a side cutter, I'll go ahead and demonstrate on a smaller nub. What happens is instead of breaking it off, what we end up doing is we cut through the runner here. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a small nub, which would be perfect to demonstrate on, such as this one here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the nub into the stopper side, right? So if we look at our blade, stopper side, cutting blade, I'm going to put the nub on the stopper side and then I'm going to squeeze it closed and bring the cutting side. So I hold it like I hold it left-handedly, but what I'm going to do is as I'm going to squeeze it, it looks like this side is moving. But what ended up happening is it's, this side is going to start to move because of my other hand that's holding it in place. So see, like if I hold it like this, the stopper side moves. But once I put it up against the nub, you see the blade side start to move. Yeah. So once I place it like that, I'll go ahead and give it a pinch. I'll go around and do it to all the pieces here. One more time. And then what you'll notice is that unlike the other style of the nippers there, we have much cleaner cuts on these nubs. And so that is the general principle behind a side cutter and why they're a little bit different and why it's more of a precision tool compared to our regular nippers. So 
The regular nippers is going to be our workhorse. They're going to be for the thicker type of nubs or gates that we're going to be dealing with, while the side cutters is going to be more for cleanup of these smaller nubs and working on these smaller pieces. So if you go back to my original video on nippers, I usually say use your regular style blade in conjunction with something else such as a hobby knife, but in this case, it'll be our side cutters. So now that we have a general idea of how these two tools work together, I'm going to show you guys my step-by-step -step process of how I go starting from the regular nipper before moving on to a smaller side cutter. So in fact, I'll use the Bandai entry grade nippers and I generally like these because of the smaller grips. So what I'll go ahead and do is this side's already cut. I'll go ahead and cut this section here, which is already kind of broken and then come over here and make the final cut. Now, the reason you make the cut far away from the piece is because you want that stress mark to be further away. So when we come back in with our side cutters, there's less of a chance to be a stress mark right up on the piece. Now, unlike a lot of people when it comes to cutting, one of the things that I like to do with my nubs like this is I'll actually cut a big section, a big distance away from the actual piece. So if I can get it to focus here, what you'll see is I'm not actually butting my blade up against the piece here. I come off and I cut a little bit away. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So you can see I leave a little bit of a nub still. I'll do the same on this side. Leave a little bit of a nub. And I'll do the same over here. Sometimes your blade may, blade may slip down. That's okay. As long as you're cutting on the nub, that's the important part. Now at this point, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and come flush up against it. Once again, putting the stopper up against the nub here and then closing the blade side down on the nub, cutting it clean off. What this is going to do is this is going to eliminate your stress marks as much as possible, bringing the size of the nub down to very small. At this point, you can go ahead and sand that and it'll be gone using either um, a gun primer balancer, or if you have a racer, you can also still use that as well. But I generally like to do it like this because it makes the cleanup steps a lot easier. So once again, brace it up against the stopper and then pinch it closed. And then if I need to a little bit more, I can always come back and do the same thing again. Once more for the final nub, brace it up against the stopper and then pinch it closed. So at this point, the nub is very minuscule and can easily be cleaned up with one or two passes of a primer, um, a gun primer racer or a, a racer or a balancer. So. That's generally how I do my regular everyday nubs. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can find a much thicker nub to show you my process on how I use my side cutters for nubs that are a little bit thicker. Question of the day. While we know single bladed nippers are the number one most suggested tool, what do you guys think the number two most suggested tool is? Let me know in the comments below and we'll get back to the video. All right, so I have a chosen piece here that we're gonna use for our thicker nubs. This is the shield section of the um, full mechanic scutcheon. And as you can take a look here, you can see that these nubs are thick. I'll even zoom it in closer so you guys get a better look, right? That is the size of the, oh, that is the size of our nub that we're dealing with there. So how do we cut something like this without one, stressing the plastic and two, breaking our side cutters? Well, one of the things that I actually like to do with something like this is instead of coming in at it straight like that, I'll actually come in at an angle and cut diagonally across the nub. And the reason that happens is because as I start to squeeze the blade on the nub, instead of putting a lot of that tension all along the length of the blade, I'm actually putting it on a single point, which is the corner of the nub. So what happens is as I put it in here and I come across and I cut, I cut it on a bit of a diagonal making it a little bit easier to cut. And then at this point, instead of coming in and cutting clean, I'll actually shave the nub down by making several smaller cuts here. So something like that. Another cut like that. Another cut like that. A thin cut like that. A little bit more. And as you can see, as we're getting closer, the white stress mark is starting to go away and we get left with just the plastic color down to the point where even if I come all the way down to the bare plastic here, as I start to cut, we get a very minimal color here on the piece. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate again. So if we have a thick nub like this, instead of coming straight on, I'm gonna come across at a diagonal like this 
first make a cut like that. Then instead of just coming straight down to the bottom and cutting the whole nub, I'll go ahead and just shave a little bit off at a time. Another little section here. And finally, one more down here at the bottom. And as you can see, it really minimizes the amount of stress mark that is left here on the section versus if I come over to here and I just come straight down to the bottom and I cut, right? You get a much more pronounced nub mark, a little bit of a stress mark because instead of cutting, we're actually squeezing the plastic a bit before our blade actually grabs and starts to cut. So one more time here, take, their, take our hobby knife or uh, side cutters, cut it on the diagonal, give it a squeeze, right? And then shave down a little bit until this is a nub that was broken and minimize the little bit of nub left there. So one more word of caution before you go. If you're working on a kit that has clear plastic bits like this, do not use your side cutters on these clear plastic sections. Reason being is because the chemical composition of these clear plastics make them a little bit harder and more brittle compared to the regular polystyrene that you find in your kits. What happens is as you start to put pressure on it with your blade, because the plastic is harder, you have a higher chance of breaking it compared to when you're doing something on the regular polystyrene plastic. Instead, I highly recommend using something like a hobby knife to cut down the rest of your nubs down to the plastic before sanding it away. And if you want a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments below. And I'll go ahead and add that to the list of videos to do in the future. But if you come across clear plastic kits like this, especially older kits, do not use your side cutters and just stick to other sanding or nub removal methods. So there you guys have it, a quick video on single blade nippers. Proper use and care of your nippers can ensure that they last for many kits down the road. If any questions or thoughts, please drop those in the comments below. And with that said, thank you guys so much for joining me today hope you found some value in this video and remember take care of yourselves take care of each other and i'll see you in the next one